Thanks to Slightly Mad Studios, I've had early preview access to Project Cars 3. In this video, I'm going to tell you what I think of the game and who I think Project Cars 3 is most likely to appeal to. Fasten your seatbelts, drive sideways, let's get going. Let's tackle this head on and probably end up with a concussion. So, if you played Project Cars 1, you were like, I didn't know what that was. I mean, you probably followed it on the forums, you did the World of Mass Development and all that lark, so you probably did know what it was before it came out, but you got it, it was Project Cars 1. Great. You then played Project Cars 2, and people coming to it will be like, oh, hang on, Project Cars 1 with a 2 next to it is a sequel to Project Cars 1. I know what I'm getting, and do you know what? Project Cars 2 very much was like Project Cars 1, but with some more content, some different features. It, it made sense it was Project Cars. Now, Project Cars 3 really isn't Project Cars, or certainly isn't anything like the previous two games. Bar your recognised locations, aspects of the actual graphical engine and uh, like the hand animations and things, you will notice stuff, if you're familiar with the Madness engine, that was in the previous games. But realistically, this is not a Project Cars game. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just very confusing for people that have a base expectation for logical naming conventions. Now, with that out of the way, what should you expect from Project Cars 3? So, really, the, the easiest way to really think of this is that Project Cars 3, from the limited amount of time I've had with it, with this preview version, is really what I think Grid or Need for Speed Shift should have been. It's what those kind of games would want to be in that you have a really nice, snappy, fast progression, quick sprint races, quick hot lap events, other game modes I can't talk about, go from track to track, blaze through it, no real nonsense f uh, story that just drives you crazy. You know, a proper, to the point, upgrade your car, get new content, play that content, single player arcade racing game. And I think structurally, in terms of it being a compelling single-player game, um, SMS seem to have really have done a good job with this. I could see a lot of people picking this up and actually really getting into it and really enjoying the process of playing through it. If you're more of that gamer type of person, or you're looking for more of a proper traditional single-player experience with cars on real-world tracks. Uh, also, I would say the fact this will have VR support on PC, if you've got a VR headset, uh, again, I wasn't able to test that with this version of the game, but assuming the VR in this works as well as it does in other Madness Engine games, I, I think a lot of VR players will really enjoy this as well. Probably a good point to say about the AI in this, at times, with this version of the game at least, they can be a bit cheesy. I definitely felt like they slowed down towards the end of the races. Uh, we, you know, we're fast at the start and they definitely, you know, there seems to be like a designed nature to the AI. The negative of that is it can at times feel cheesy and take away from the um, feeling of, uh, of pride of beating them fairly. But other times you just end up with absolutely bonkers, really close racing. You're so focused on driving, you, you don't care if it's cheesy AI or not, AI or not. you just driving you know and um of ai in a lot of games the the overtakes they're doing you the aggression of the ai without them taking you out for the most part was really good and i think with the vr headset especially would just be absolutely crazy like some like some kind of like weird 1980s over the top action race film that that's kind of how the races tend to pan out in this so you know this is all with like my my gamer head on i can totally see this game selling really well I think uh, I think it's a good game title. Now, if I put my sim racer <laughs> helmet on here, brr, 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 it's like Darth Vader going into his chamber, pure darkness of the heart from sim racing. And uh, well, it's it's a weird one, guys. Look, to me, the handling in this just feels uh, it's a bit mushy. It's not. I don't think it's even as tight as Project Cars 2 and, you know, I'm not saying that the handling is totally unrealistic because, you know, in a lot of the, you know, you've got iRacing and other simulators, there's weird stuff going on in them where cars just 
lose grip and it doesn't make any sense at all and you can't push properly. You can definitely push really hard in this. You can definitely counter steer through corners drift and, you know, you can drive properly in this. But the there's an aspect to the handling in this from the time I spent with it where it just feels mushy. There's like a... There's an indefined nature to it. It just doesn't feel as tight as what you typically find with you know, your sort of super-duper hardcore simulators like uh, uh, the original set of course at ACC, R Factor 2, um, you know, it, it, if, to me, I've not done a direct side-by-side -side comparison, but whilst I was playing this, I was like, hang on, this feels a bit like the sort of Codemasters grid handling, which is weird because I don't think this is using their physics at all or their tire model. I believe this is still using the Project Cars 2 tire model, so, you know, I don't know what's going on, but uh, yeah, that's just the impression I got. Uh, probably the perfect example of it is when you brake far too hard, uh, you get into like a sort of locked slide, which you can still control, which again isn't necessarily unrealistic, but it just feels a little bit baked to me, a little bit lacking in depth. I totally feel in control of the cars with this, and it's got satisfying handling, and uh, the, the actual the force feedback is really nice, tells you what's going on. It just doesn't seem to have that granularity, probably the best word, that uh, other simulators have. And I think what, what I found is, you know, when I drive the Formula cars in this and then drive a road car, they kind of feel like the same car, only one, you know, one's just a lot faster. <laughs> it's got a different spec speed to it, but it, it's, this is very hard to explain in a way that doesn't make me sound like a lunatic. Maybe a good example is the GT4 cars in ACC. They're all GT4 cars, but even between them, they all just feel like vastly different in, in total approach. You do have to approach the different cars in Project Cars 3 differently, but, you know, it's just not as subtly nuanced, at least as far as I can tell. You know, I'm sure people will argue with me. So, I, I, very much that's the same way I feel about games like Forza, Gran Turismo... You know, it's, it's, I, I just feel this is more in, in that kind of ballpark for whatever reason. Who knows, maybe it's mostly just force feedback. I haven't had that much time with this, so it'll be nice to fiddle with stuff more and see at a later date if my opinion of that changes. But that's just the impression I get from this short preview time I've had with it, specifically when it comes to the handling of the vehicles. So, yeah, I think, I think this sort of super-duper Darth Vader heart of stone <laughs> sim racers will really probably be a bit disappointed by this i think also if you've played through project cars 2 loads you have probably played a lot of the actual content that's in this in terms of the different vehicles and so it's like well who cares about unlocking a car you've already driven in the previous game uh, or, or even played in other games i mean you can't even really fault the developer for the <laughs> there's only so many real cars in the world once you've used those real cars in four other five other 10 other games you start like, well i know what those cars are like it's not that exciting unlocking them in in a in another game but i think that in some ways does help the customization aspect of this the fact that you could take any kind of game customize it and get it up to a to a higher spec to then race it you know <laughs> race it outside of what its original spec would have been that's potentially really interesting and i think really where where that will be most interesting is in the multiplayer of this which again I'm, that's not something i've been privy to so it's kind of up in the air with this from a hardcore sim racer perspective from a gaming perspective it, it seems like a really good game um you know runs well looks nice nice single player fun handling nothing annoying Maybe, maybe could do with a bit more variation, possibly, uh, possibly through the single player. I'm not. F I've only played so much the single player, so I don't know for sure. And it's not as spectacular, of course, as something like Forza Horizon 4 and 3. But the actual racing and the AI racing is more engaging than Forza Horizon. So, yeah, it, it, it carves its own place out. Why did they call it Project Cars 3? They should have called it Project. S slightly mad racing <laughs> project super hardcore bonkers racing Pro project you're always battling cars <laughs> racing because that is really what it's about with this is it really is side by side door banging racing car upgrading 
it's, it's a branding problem with this game because there's nothing wrong with the game, but there's... I can't be the only person here that's just really bamboozled by the by the naming and branding of this. But, you know, I'm sure... I think what, what will happen is, when this comes out, we will see. We will see what happens, as with everything. It's definitely one to, to, to look towards. Don't expect a, a simulator, or what you think a simulator is. Don't expect that. Do expect what will probably be a really fun game to play through and potentially really fun multiplayer. I can totally see people, you know, you, you do your sort of serious, <laughs> is there such a thing, serious sim racing in your, you know, your more bland, your more, I mean, I don't think they're bland. I love driving simulators, but you know what I mean? You're more sort of uh, stick up the bum simulators. <laughs> you do your serious racing in them. And then, uh, you know, this is kind of like how you go to your rec fests and you go to your Project Cars 3s. That's where it makes sense to me. Wow, we're going gonna, we're gonna to be covering more of this as I get to play it more. And uh, I, I will babble on incoherently, endlessly, because that's, that's just what I do. I, I honestly, I, I'm, so, I'm so mixed on opinion with this. I think the gamer in me is like, oh, I quite like parts of that. And then the sim racer in me is like, oh, dear. <laughs> and then sometimes I'm like, the sim racer in me is like, oh, that's quite good. And then the gamer in me is like, oh, no. <laughs> This game is making me bipolar in opinion. I don't, uh, whatever. We'll have to just see when it comes out. If you like drinking tea, click that subscribe button. Click the like button. Bang your forehead on the bell, the, the one on the screen. And, uh, you know, that's it. You'll be kept up to date with Sim Racing News. Thanks for watching this, guys. Till the next one. Happy tea drinking. Goodbye. <laughs>